Welcome everyone to the She Builds Voices of Women of Color series, a new show at this year's AWS reInvent aimed to amplify underrepresented or minority women in tech. Throughout this series, you will hear from women around the world with diverse backgrounds, sharing their stories, triumphs, and challenges, which we hope will inspire and empower you in your own journey. But most importantly, bring awareness of those voices that are often unheard. Well, today, I'd love to welcome a special guest with me. We have Principal Specialist and Product Manager from Amazon Web Services, Masanya. Masanya Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Kim. How are you doing? I'm doing very well today. I'm very happy to be speaking with you again. And for those of you who um, may th have seen Masanya's face and see, hey, that person looks familiar, Masanya presented at the AWS SheBuilds Global Summit last week. How'd that go? Oh, it was amazing. I I really felt uh, inspired to continue to, you know, pay it forward, listen and talk about my story. And, and it, it was, even though I was, you know, giving uh, Shiro's advice and she builders advice, it also kind of brought some full circle moments to me as well about look at what you've done in your life and, and look at what's possible and, 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 you know, giving me the courage to share that. And so I, I really appreciated that opportunity, Kim. I really felt that too, Masanya. And I messaged her right after her presentation because for me, I felt like her session inspired me and that gave me that full circle moment. So let's talk about that full circle moment. I'm really interested in learning a little bit more about your background. Mm -hmm. I know that you are a technical um, female. So that means for those yeah. of you who are joining and yeah. aren't sure of that, that ac or that term, tech, technical and non-technical, meaning that she is, is quite savvy um, from the tech um, coding space and she, she's quite um, in depth in that area. So, Masanya, can you talk to us a little bit about how yes. you entered that career, that path, and, and what any challenges that you faced um, in, in getting a, a role within you know, tech um, before you entered AWS? Uh, yes, yeah, so I started kind of on that technical journey with math. Um, I uh, fell in love with math. Uh, my father was a math major in college um, at a historically black college and university, Russ College uh, in Mississippi. Um, and he would always challenge me on different problems. And the, the essence of being a problem solver, uh, it's, it's just, it came natural. And I don't know if it's hereditary, genetic, or whatever it was. So I fell in love with math, and uh, when I was in undergrad, uh, in, in uh, undergrad college, I uh, was a math major in preparation to do a dual degree to become an electrical engineer. And I took a course in computational math, and those ones and zeros, um, and, and bytes in different uh, uh, scenarios. And I kind of fell in love with computers. And at that time, this is a time before uh, the, the, the internet was uh, mainstream. You know, I said, this is the next age. This is a digital transformation. Um, and and I, I was doing that during the 90s. And so I just decided to, uh, uh, one of my uh, friends who had graduated the same college before I did, had taken a job at a, a uh, software, IT software company, uh, it was in technical support. And he was like, you know, Sanya, you're a problem solver. You like to troubleshoot and, you know, you don't rest until problems are solved. I think there's a job for you. And I was like, I don't know. Uh, let me think about it. Because I wanted to come back home to Atlanta, right? And uh, I said, well, you know what? Why don't I get some experience? I do like computers. I want to learn more. I took a, a course in C++, and I know some people may have to go search what C++ is because they probably haven't heard of that now uh, based on new technology. And um, I, I, I understood that I, I like, you know, coding. However, I like troubleshooting coding and figuring out where the problems were in coding. So my first job in tech uh, was actually in uh IT technical support. I was a support engineer for a, a software company uh, troubleshooting when people have problems with our software. They call in. I carried a pager. And if those <laughs> of you don't know what a pager is, you can go search that as well. I carried a pager. <laughs> Kim, funny story. 
on, you know, uh, December 31st, 1999, right? I'm literally at the office on a cop because we all thought because of the Y2K, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we had done the troll shooting. We had created documentations, got people certified, Y2K certified, all that stuff. And then nothing happened, right? Yep. Uh, uh, I and, remember that. And all that. <laughs> Yeah, but it was just that kind of experience, and I enjoyed because it was like, you know, people, and, and some people were like, well, how did you mentally handle that? Because people people called me with problems, issues, and it, I was driven to solve them. So that problem-solving perspective. And, you know, um, you mentioned tech equals code. In my world and vision, tech is beyond code, right? Court, of course, coding is key component, but there's so many different dynamics of tech um, that we have to say. And, you know, tech could be kind of like an abstracted word, but you can be technical, um, understand code, understand how to leverage it, and then use it in, in different areas. So I want to challenge people to just state that, you know, don't be boxed into defining it as one thing. Uh, builders can go beyond just doing um, certain aspects uh, in my mind, you know, from solution architecting, to quality assurance, testing, all those different things. Those You have to have a technical aptitude in order to understand those components. And it's really interesting that you shared your background and how you got into tech from not even really thinking about a, a career in tech. You know, you think about mathematics mm -hmm. and becoming an engineer, which is really inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, and I can relate mm -hmm. to that. You know, I came from a completely non-tech um, background. I came from sport. Like I, I played soccer professionally around the world and I went into tech later on. Um, and so I would love for you to share with our audience today how you evolved in your career. Because what I want everyone to remember uh, is that you are a minority within a minority. So for those of you watching with, uh, with us today, 25% of women make up the tech industry. Out of the 25%, 3% are black women. So, Masanya, that is an extraordinary statistics, right? So share with me your experience yeah. throughout your journey from the early, you know, 2000s to today on how you've excelled in that career. Yeah, I mean, first I'm going to say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud, okay? Um, the, the thing that happened with me was that I had mentors uh, a gentleman who was a minority black man uh, who recommended me for the job, uh, uh, mentored me, became my manager, all that. And then actually what happened, um, we, we were, you know, different, we were learning different things and uh, we decided to go get our, our MBAs. And um, uh, the reason I, I was going, um, I use Indiana University Kelly School of Business uh, submitted the application, passed the GMAT, did all that different stuff, and, you know, was a little nervous about getting in, but the reason I got in was because I had a technical background, and it was something different than somebody who had just, you know, a, a, a traditional trajectory into a, a business school. I wanted to learn multi-sides or multi-facets of, of, of a business, right, from the beginning to the end, and how, do, how could we you know, merge that and how can you communicate to customers at different levels from, you know, uh, from, you know, entry level all the way to the C-suite. And so what I did was as I was, you know, getting that experience, uh, uh, getting my degree, uh, the company I was at, the company I was at, unfortunately had to dissolve um, uh, for, for, for reasons that, you know, it's, it's, it's the past, right? And so what I did was I focused on my, my MBA and I said, you know what, when I come back into IT and it was my dad, he said, Sonia, you got a gift. You love technology. Go back, you know, you, you, you're about to graduate with your MBA. Go back and why don't you go in and consult? So I, I moved from technical support uh, to consulting and worked at two different co consultings. Um, one of them was a, a global uh, a consulting firm uh, today. And I just basically started as a consultant, built my way up to management, and then built programs and teams and became a senior manager, um, helping people, helping large Fortune 500, even Fortune 100 customers understand the life cycle of service management, 
the life cycle of building services and transforming and not just providing technology to your customers, but treating technology as a service that customers need, whether they're internal customers or external customers. And how did you align customers' business goals and, and, and mission and values to, to the technology that they were trying to do? How was it helping them uh, become more competitive? And so I did that. Um, I, I got, uh, you know, went through the different rounds at that company. I had uh, two little ones. Uh, the first one uh, was a beautiful little girl. And then the second one was a son um, who, you know, after that uh, maternity leave, maternity leave I, I learned some things. I came back to a situation and I said, you know what? I'm ready to do something different. I want to do something more. But it also at the same time, I, you know, at the place I was at, which is a great company, I was like, I want to do more. I want to grow. And they were so used to, you're the star in this area. We want you to stay here. And I was like, you didn't hear me. I want to do more. Give me more. I've proven that I can do this. I've proven that I can help different groups. I can make get customers to recommend different services. And so what I ended up doing was I took bias for action. I, I got my Scrum Master certification. I already had a, a project management professional certification. And I sought out what I was looking for. But before I would leave that company, I said, I have to go somewhere that's going to challenge me even more. I'm not going to make a lateral move to another consulting company. I want to go somewhere where I am constantly challenged. And the main reason why I joined AWS and went into professional services was for one leadership principle. I'll write a lot. Mm -hmm. at, at AWS, I stated in the She Builds um, uh, session before, we have 16 leadership pr principles. I had never heard a company say or give people the power to feel that they could be right, they could take action, they could take ownership. And I said, I want to get into something like that, right? I want to, if this is really that culture, and, and if this is really, if, 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 you know, some people talk about it and then some people act about that's it, right? right? I said, that's really the culture, then that's what something yeah. I want to do. So I joined. And I've been here um, in December to be five years. Wow. You definitely had um, a bit of experience there that I want to I ask you a really interesting question here that a lot of our audience and our viewers mm -hmm. are probably really interested to know. Um, tell me a little bit about negotiation. You know, how did you sell yourself? And I want you to also tell me, did you have any insecurities about selling yourself? Because quite often, women feel that, oh, I don't have all the boxes checked, so maybe I'll just go with the first offer, or maybe I won't apply. You talked about this in your presentation last week at the Global Summit. I loved it. It was inspiring. Mm -hmm. You talked about opportunities, challenges. Tell me what your mindset was when you were going into job interviews or getting your offers. So prior to AWS, I, I, I took a be bold action at AWS. Prior to AWS, I'll be honest, I'm going to keep it 100 real with you. I didn't negotiate. Whatever the offer was, I was like, ooh. And I would talk to my parents, and this was, you know, um, and uh, my husband and I had just uh, gotten married, and he was just like, you know, yeah, that's good, that's great. But keep in mind, my my parents came in what I would call that, that traditional role in my community. My mom, she was pre-med and undergrad, but then she became a teacher, right? My dad was a math chemistry major, but he went into ministry, right? And so they were they didn't go into the corporate setting, right? And so it was one of those things. They're both from Mississippi. They met at um, historically black college, University of Russ College, and then went to came to the Atlanta um, to uh, Atlanta University as well as uh, uh, Morehouse Seminary. And so they they kind of was like, you know, sign you don't move the needle too much what you're being offered that, you know, in our community, that's beautiful. And so I, I, I listened to them, but then, you know, when you get into the, the, the job and you're listening and you're hearing and you become a manager and you're like, I sold myself short. Yes. I said, no, that's you right. didn't girl. You saw this. There was money on the table. Yep. What is the game? 
So, you know what I did? I had a career counselor. I said, tell me the game. Tell me the game. You know, life is a game. We we do different things in different ways. It, it, it is what it is, right? And so when I came to AWS, I, for the first time in umpteen years, that's my business, how many years it is, uh, I negotiated. And, and, you know, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. But they were like, okay. And I was like, ooh, all right. Yes. And it felt great, right? And it's a thing of, you know, you do your research first, right? You know, you, you don't just negotiate and, and put yourself out of a range that's not comparable, you know, but you do your research, you try to figure out what those ranges are. You talk to peers, you talk to networks, you find out something. And then and then feel your value and know your worth. Because guess what? If you accept what I'm going to give you, guess that's what you're going to get, right? And so you got to be bold, do your research, do it. And it may be that the negotiation, you may not get all the salary. You know, I had one of my, uh, 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 she's a sister to me, but she's a, she's a best friend as well. She negotiated, you know, not only, you know, an increase in salary, but she negotiated to compromise with the increase. She negotiated paid time off, right? Because the, the company that she was at wasn't able to meet her told you where she was, but she, she did that. So there could be different ways, but you have to understand how to do that negotiation and provide facts and data. Because when it comes to money, everything behind it, ROI, return of investment, facts and data, and the proven of why you should be where you are or where you feel that you should be. So that's the thing that I would tell anyone um, going in because it does, if you don't negotiate, you set yourself on a lower trajectory and it, it's hard to, once you're in a company, you know, uh, um, it's, it's, it can be, become challenging to, to do the correction on that. So that would be my advice to anyone. I definitely agree with that, Masanya. And I would <laughs> also from my experience, um, second Masanya is uh, advice and please take notes. Um, and if you don't ask, you don't get, and we spoke about this last week at the summit and I'd want to touch a little bit more about your past experiences because our audience and our viewers today will come from various backgrounds and, you know, different parts of their journey. Tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced as a black woman in tech, as a black, you know, woman in, in corporate, um, and then maybe some of the advice that your parents had given you over the years that helped you feel empowered also, but made you think about what steps you wanted to take, what action you wanted to take that might have been different than your community or that your culture would have expected you to. Um, I would say some of the kind of, I mean, the, in general, right, we're just talk about just career. Yes, there were microaggressions, right? There were microaggressions. I, I would, I'll tell about a time where, uh, you know, I'm an expert in, in um, IT operations, um, cloud operations, management and governance. And uh, I had a gentleman ask me, you know, and, and guy's a great guy. He's a great guy. I'm not going to say that, but he was just like, you know, uh, you're you're gonna do the training for for this particular software? I was like, yep. Um, are you sure you you know about this software? And I'm like, well, the 20 plus years of experience says I do, you know. And I'm looking at him like, did he just say this? And he gave a look, right? He just he he it was a, I think it was a non malicious prejudgment, right? So then after the presentation, he was like, wow, you know your stuff. And we actually built a relationship. And because I made a joke, I said, what, you thought I was, they were going to let me talk and be stupid? And no, <laughs> no. People come to the table with different things, you know. And, and it's, I've learned this lesson that people will judge you based on what their box is, not based on what your life and your experiences are, right? So a lot of times when people are judging you, they're basing, they're judging you based off their own darn limitations. Oh, I could never travel to South Africa or China or, or whatever, whatever, and train customers and, and employees. I, I could never do that. Right. You could never do that. But I did it. You get where I'm coming from? Yep. And so it's one of those things in life that you, you just, 
you you roll it off. You you know, if it gets egregious, you stand firm on your ground and say, you will respect me. You don't have to like me, you know? I mean, Kim, there, look, there might be people in your family you don't like, right? Everybody don't like everybody. But it's, it's, it's a thing of professional respect, right? Re respect me, respect us. Let's achieve some goals. And at the end of the day, that empty chair of the customer, let's do things right for the customer. Let's put all this other crap aside and let's do what's right for the customer. And then everybody will win at the at the end. The other thing that helped me too was that I had managers. I would go under managers that I knew could manage me and my personality, my, you know, essence, my my boldness, my candor, right? And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if, if someone tried to put me with a manager that I didn't think could manage me, I'd be like, oh, no, no, they can't manage me. And I know you're like, what? Yes, I did that because when you know yourself, you know how you can be managed, right? And people who were open and willing to be, have the courage to let me lead, you know, Many times in my career, I did the manage up process, right? Where I would give advice to my manager to say, you should be doing this so that you can go up and you could do this, you could do that. Now help, what do you think that I need to do? So it was a it was a collaboration type of thing. It wasn't that that person was better than me and I was better than them. It was that we were both trying to figure it out. The other thing is this, to all our Shiro allies, right? It takes courage for a Shiro ally to not be afraid of a dynamic Shiro and what their career can do, right? And so with that, if you align yourself to people who are open to accepting a person for who you are, then it's an easier path. But if you align yourself to people who just want to keep you in that little box, right, then, you know, they're going to keep you in that box, not realizing that if you rise, they rise, right? Like the poem right. said last week. And and that's that's been the thing. And that's, you know, I've literally picked managers that were open to allowing me to excel. Um, or I was, you know, and if there was a manager, if I got into a manager that wasn't in that, I would gently find a way to move to go to someone else because I knew me, right? Yeah. And if I knew if I was going to excel, that would be the case. And it may not be that a person can move that fast, right? But you can plant them seeds, you can build that network, and over time you can move and find someone that's willing to support you and believe in you, you know? Uh, when I manage big programs or large teams of 50 plus 200, you know, people, I would always challenge direct reports to to be better than me and i was wasn't afraid to ever hire somebody that was that had more technical knowledge than me that had more management skills than me because guess what <laughs> i picked you so if i if you're great then we're all going to be great and we move up even if you move above me guess what it's masanya is building her brand of creating dynamic leaders Hiring and developing the best talent. So that's what the thing should be. But that takes time and it takes courage for she allies, for even she roles. Okay? Let's not talk. Let's, let's, we got our own things too. We can't be the, the you know, anti, you know, everybody right. got to figure out a way how we can we work together. And you said so sense. many yeah. amazing, um, you know, you shared a lot of wonderful stories and shared amazing experiences. And Masanya, you're very courageous. I love your strength. I admire it. I'd love for some of our viewers as well to learn from you. And this is important for us to think about as we have, you know, folks on the, on, on the sessions um, joining us today from around the world who might feel a bit hesitant or don't have the confidence yet because that comes with time as well. You know, I'm sure, Masanya, you can yeah. agree that you weren't like that 20 years ago, right? And so that, that's a full circle yeah. moment for you. And you learn to, to be like that and, and to develop those skills and to, to hone that inner strength in you. Um, can you share a little bit more about 
how you can advise those that would like to be as strong as you to stand up to maybe their manager, to be bold enough to say, that does not sit well with me, that role probably is not best for me, or I prefer not to report into that individual, this is where I see myself. What, do you, what would the advice be for someone that's looking to, to learn how to, to communicate that to their team or to the manager? So I would say you have to understand the language of the person you're working with. What is their motivator? What, how do they work? How do they respond? Are they data driven? Are they visionary? Are they, you know, you know, fact based? Are they, you know, go with the masses? You have to kind of understand how they respond first, you know, uh, before you you create your approach, right? And it's and sometimes, you know, and a lot of people will say, you know, be careful. You can't be the angry black woman or black or female or wh whatever you may be. You go in there, kind of, if the person is a, um, an emotional person and feeds off emotion, then you can cater that conversation that way. If that person is fact-based, then you have to communicate with them in a fact-based way. You know, I've made mistakes, right? I was, you know... Sometimes I, 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 prior to joining, you know, AWS, I, I was, I was, I'm going to say spicy. Let's call it spicy or let's call it feisty. Let's say feisty, right? And, you know, I, I've had some conversations that were not the right tone, the right ma manner. And it got off. People understood that I was being passionate, but they saw just, the over passion and then what I was trying to achieve didn't get achieved because I put too much of, of it in. So it's finding that right balance, right? Um, to, to it. And I would say that you plant seeds also. Um, if, if you plant seeds, let people know what you're doing uh, or what you want to achieve, start demonstrating those skills it may not be that you'll get that answer right away, right? Um, I, I built a business case that I'm, I'm still working on now and uh, earlier in February of this year. And, you know, I was told, hey, wait a minute, hold on. I said, okay, I, I, I'm a, okay. It is what it is. I spent, you know, hours at, at night trying to build this business case uh, that, you know, we call narratives at AWS. And um, I, it was, hold on, two weeks ago, I was told, hey, we're, we're ready. You get where I'm coming from? And so it may not be that you're going to get that answer right now, but build that case, build those reminders. And then, you know, there's also that time where you also have to figure out, okay, if I'm on this, if is this making me so stressed or sick to my stomach? Do I need to move on, Right. And letting go, me, I'm going to speak for me, right? It's hard to let go, especially some things that you build up, right? Or that you have achieved or you've accomplished. But if you know your value and you know your worth, then you have to sometimes move on. And sometimes your own action is for you, for your family, uh, as opposed to it being, you know, for, for whatever. So you have to know when to... Keep trying to, to, to convince, but if they're not hearing, if you're not being heard, then you may want to rethink where you need to be. And it may not be leave the company. It may be another team. You know, I have, um, I have hired people on teams that I have managed whose performance on other teams was considered poor. But when they get on my team, they're considered the top performer or in that higher rank. And the reason being is because I based and judge them on, I believe you can do it as opposed to trying to suppress you or do this or do that. Do you get what I'm saying? And like I, going back to that taking courage yeah. and, and that's what it is. And, and, that, and it really sounds is. like Masanya as well that, you know, you have a really great, skill of identifying talent and um, allowing that mm -hmm. to flourish and I think that's a good sign of a leader and you said a couple things that I want to point out and, and this is you know some advice for our viewers today as well and I heard this 
wonderful saying, um, you have two ears and one mouth, right? So you should be doing double the listening. And, and that's true to understanding who you're working with, understanding the people you work with, um, and learning what you mentioned as well. What is their style? How do they like to be communicated you know, too. So, you know, the more you listen and observe, um, the better you are going to learn these skills of understanding people. And we, we have to work with people. We're in tech, but we do have to work with people. Um, so it's important to, yeah. to kind of build that emotional intelligence. And that might not come naturally to some, um, but it's a, definitely a skill that you can learn. And you can definitely do your due diligence of, of learning those skills. And I wanted to touch base on that, Masanya. Um, is there any advice that you would give anyone joining today around emotional intelligence and building that muscle up, but also learning more about yourself? Because you mentioned you have to do what's right for you, mm -hmm. right? So we have to mm -hmm. think about, yes, this is what you want to do. This is a great path. But at the end of the day, if you have done everything in your path to, to sort of build a good environment for yourself, you have to learn the skills to identify what's right for me. Do I go? Do I stay? What's the next step? So from your experiences and also managing you know, a large team, what do you think? How, how can you share a little bit of advice? Or if you can give two tips to people watching today, what would they be? I would say one, you know, there's a thing called buying signals, right, of, of you know, uh, when I did business relationship management and account management, those buying signals of a person, you can tell whether or not a person is is into what you're trying to do or not. You can tell if a person believes that you can go to the next level or not, right? And so you've got to understand and open your eyes to that. If uh, If a person is trying to hold you down, uh, because they feel that you should be at a certain place for whatever reason it may be. It could be culture, it could be ethnicity, it could be race, whatever that may be. You got to be able to identify that, right? The other thing is this. Nobody's going to believe in you better than yourself. And the spirit, whoever you believe in from above or past this universe. So if you don't believe you can do it, I agree with you. You can't, right? Right? And, and it's one of those things of daily doing the confidence. And how do you build confidence? You continue to deliver results. If you've achieved something, if you learn something, challenge yourself continually. Here's the thing, you know, I grew up with a, you know, at my grandmama's house in Mississippi, there was that rotary dial phone, right? I was so excited in the 80s and the early 90s when call waiting came through, right? Children and, and, and people today swipe left, swipe right, do all this different stuff. Technology changes so fast. And you have to be uncomfortable in, in going out of the box all the time. And you have to be comfortable in being uncomfortable and going to that, taking that next step, taking that next stride. Because if you feel that you can only learn this much, then you'll, you'll, you'll be stagnant, right? And it's one of those things of, you know, I, um, I have different certifications and I'm about to work on another certification just because I always want to sharpen the saw, sharpen my leadership skills. I, I always want to be, you know, I, I used to sell Mary Kay on the side when I had my first job, right? Uh, cosmetics, right? And uh, Mary Kay Ash used to say, the speed of the leader is the speed of the gang. And what that basically means is that don't ask your people to do anything you can't do, right? So staying on top of different things, you just got to continue to build up those muscles, like I was talking about before, the intelligence muscles, the determination muscles, you got to just keep doing that. And, yeah. and don't give up, because it's, it's, you're going to get some rejection. And some of it may be a fiscal, a business decision. Timing may be right or wrong. It could be the, uh, you know, a, you know, a person being, you know, malice or whatever. But you can't quit on you because if you quit on you, nobody else is going to help you. That's right. 
um, Masanya, you come from a, a very um, educated background with your family, also have gone to school. I would love to hear some family stories of yours because I can imagine there's some, and uh, you and I have had a chat, but I, I can imagine you've had some amazing <laughs> ancestral stories, especially coming from Mississippi. Um, your parents both going to college, that is such a success. Um, so you're, you're pretty much second generation. Tell me a little bit about your background, yeah. Mississippi, and any you know really inspiring stories from, from maybe your grandparents. Yes, well, so my mom and dad, if you can see them here, uh, that's my mama, that's my daddy. <laughs> That's little Look at me you. with the big yeah. head, forehead. I got that big forehead, right? <laughs> um, they're both from different parts of Mississippi, right? Um, my mom's from Winona. My my dad was born in Phoebe, which is very close to Starkville, Mississippi. They grew up during the Jim Crow, um, during the tough times in the South, right? Uh, and Masanya, diversity. do you mind if I, I ask you to explain to some of our international viewers what the Jim Crow laws were back yeah. in the day? So segregation, um, suppression of blacks, minorities, um, just based on their 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 color creed, um, and, and you know suppressing the right to vote, suppressing the right to go, segregated bathrooms, segregated everything. My mom used to have to go to a, a movie theater where she had to sit in the balcony because the whites only could sit on the main floor, right? And um, I'll never forget my uh, dad, um, a famous civil rights activist, um, Megger Evers, when he was shot, it was a white man, you know, and there are always allies, beautiful allies in um, the black community. Um, he, my dad was in 4-H and they hid my dad in a tree uh, and some other black boys because during that time in Mississippi, it was almost like a hysteria attack where not only did they shoot Medgar, they were trying to shoot other people as well. So people were protecting black kids. And growing up in the South was tough, right? So my parents were part of that first generation. My my mom, my mom's brother, my dad was the first of, you know, his, his my grandmother and grandfather had 13 kids. My, my uh, mom's parents had five um, together. And it was one of those things where they felt education was our ticket out of certain types of lifestyles, right? And so my, my parents, you know, they, even though they met at Russ, they came to Atlanta um, uh, afterwards uh, to finish their degrees, did separate uh, and, and moved on. Uh, but the beauty of it was that they instilled in their kids that education was key. And so, um, you know, I always had a, a love for arts and, and I, I was a dancer and, and all these different things. And my mom was like, I want you to, you know, you, you have this love for math and, and science and you can do something. Go be an engineer. I had a fifth grade teacher say, you could be an engineer. And you had those motivation things in Atlanta. Atlanta is a unique city in the South, right? because it gave little girls like me growing up in Atlanta, I wasn't born here, but I did grow up in Atlanta, um, attended elementary middle and high school here. Uh, and the beauty of telling kids in public schools that you can be more, that you can do more. I went to a high school called Frederick Douglass High, named after the abolitionists, right? And every day going into the gym, you would see this sign, if there's no struggle, there's no progress. And so when you grow up in that type of environment, you build leaders. Um, you build leaders that shape different areas from music to politics to science and engineering to entertainment. And, you know, I'm very proud of where, where, where I've come from and I'm very proud of the experience. You know, my dad was also a campus minister at Tennessee State University. You know, so I grew up at homecomings and I grew up in different things. And, you know, what I what I what I've learned, you know, my dad exposed me to different things, him traveling to Africa. And then when I traveled to Africa, we had different things to talk about. Uh, so it, it was one of those things that, you know, the parents instilled in me, you know, um, to 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 have an education. And I'm passing that down to my children. 
you know, my, my daughter's in a STEM, like I stated. My son, he likes uh, math and science and likes to build things. He said he wanted to be an engineer. And it's, it's just based on the fact that, you know, my parents felt that there was a better life, a better way, and, and then uh, I'm, I'm trying to honor and live up to what they've instilled in me. It's an forward. inspiring story, Masanya, and a story that many of our viewers as well would definitely um, feel really happy to hear. Um, I'm sure there are many of you out there that have a similar story um, with the background. It's important for us to share our cultural diversity um, so that you can get an understanding of how someone um, has gotten to the point where they're at now and their success and all the challenges that they were faced. Um, so I really thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I really found a lot of thank love you. in that. Masanya, before we wrap up, there's a couple of really important questions yeah. I have for you. Your favorite yes. song ever, ever. Go for it. Favorite song ever? Purple Rain by Prince. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. That's a great Purple choice. I, if you've ever been to a Prince concert, I was I, I attended one. And the first hour, he it was just ad lib, right? He was just, his whole band, were, they were just jamming. And it was silent. And it was almost like we were all zoned in and no one moved. And then when he got up and said, thank you, then everybody started screaming. And I was like, this man has a gift beyond, he, he, was, he was an icon beyond his time, right? So that's my favorite song, Purple Rain. That's a good song. Now, um, another question for you, your favorite place in the world? Hawaii. Good choice. Oh my God. Beautiful. Hawaii. Can't go wrong um, with an island. I, I, I think it's, um, I, I'm an Aquarius, okay? And the water bear, and I know water bear is, is technically an air sign, whatever it is. Uh, but I am drawn to water. Uh, I, I love beaches. And there's something about that culture. I love rich cultures from around the world, but it's just something different about that culture. That culture has just, a uniqueness and a richness that is, is just something to, you know, witness and experience. Uh, I can definitely agree. Hawaii is an absolutely gorgeous um, state of the U.S. for those international viewers. If you haven't gone, definitely go. Masanya, before we wrap up, and I do not want to wrap up with mm -hmm. you. I feel like I can chat with you forever, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I want to know something very important. And I think a lot of our viewers yeah. would love to hear this. If you could tell your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? I would say enjoy every moment and live out those moments. Younger self, don't try to be grown. Understand be in the present. Be in present in the good and the bad. Don't be upset so much about what happened in your life, what what that your parents split, whatever it may be, I would say accept life for what it is, live day by day, because when you're younger and then you get older, you want to reverse and go back younger, right? And, and it's everybody wants what they don't have, you know? I spent a lot of my 20s, you know, searching for different stuff, trying to, you know, be, be so career-oriented, career-focused, knock down the haters. I think I told you the story about when I was getting my MBA, um, there was a gentleman that said, hey, you don't need to worry about getting an MBA, get an MRS, which is a become a wife, right? And all this stuff, and I was just so determined that nothing was gonna stop me. When I look back at it, I was like, I didn't live. So then when the dynamic husband that I got came, it was amazing, but then I felt like, you know, how do you experience the world and just celebrate what's right in life right now? You got time and you do have time and not every job is the right one. Not every person or significant others will be the one either. Okay. Um, just enjoy life because once that moment's gone, it's the past and you can only do live in the forward and look to the future. So just celebrate what's right today. And you may not have everything, and it's okay. Guess what? When you do get it, and if you plant some good seeds, they will harvest. I love that. 
and I will be taking that away. I think it's always good to be reminded of uh, some of these amazing life um, advice. So Masanya, thank you so much for joining us today. Always a privilege to speak with you. Always entertaining to speak with you as well. Um, you're watching AWS She Builds Voices of Women of Color. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Um, stick with us all throughout the week. You'll be hearing from more women across the world. We'll see you next time.